A couple of weeks ago, I put up a post to our channel members asking them what they thought are the most controversial fish in the aquarium hobby. And boy, did I get some good suggestions. Some of them are obvious, while others are controversial for reasons you might not have thought of. We're going to go through this list and add our two cents about these fish and talk about things we agree with and maybe even disagree with. So it ought to be a pretty fun time. If you want to put in your two cents about these controversial fish or other fish that you think are controversial, put them down in the comment section below. And if you want to be a part of this series, click the join button next to the subscribe button. Join the team. We'll have a lot of fun and you can be a part of a future episode of this series. So let's get started. Let's get right into the list. Brenda Schroeder says, my pick, because I own one, is the blood parrot. Not knowing what makes them so dang cute is a deformity deliberately created. They can also get huge, but most people don't even know that. They need special food. I feed extreme peewee. I named mine mutant and love him to death. Blood parrots are a hybrid. We're going to talk a lot more about hybrids as we go on in this list, but what this basically means is two different fish are put together to create a blend of those two fish. Think about labradoodles. From what I've been told, the two fish that combine to make blood parrots are gold sevrums and red devils. But I've also heard different fish too, so I don't know. Some of the side effects of this hybridization is their very disfigured mouth that's really tiny and kind of awkward. And everything I've read says they're sterile. I've also heard a lot of people say that this hybridization drastically shortens their lifespan. That kind of sucks, but I gotta be honest, I've always loved blood parrots. Their quirky shape and funny kissy face mouth are just adorable to me. And in my experience, I've had them live just as long as Severums and Red Devils. So I'm not sure about the whole life expectancy thing. I personally adore these fish, but I'm also someone that's not really offended by hybrid fish. So take my opinion with a grain of salt. Gil the Goldfish says, Goldfish, I feel most hobbyists look down on them as a fish that only non-fish nerd basic beginners would keep. But on the contrary, it takes a dedicated hobbyist, in my opinion, to keep and grow goldfish in a large aquarium. But to have the fish in pristine water conditions constantly and let them have a long, healthy life. This is very true. Goldfish are looked at as just throwaway fish that you win at the carnival and you don't even have to take good care of them. You can put them in a small bowl with no water movement or filtration and they'll be just fine. This couldn't be further from the truth. The fact is goldfish are large active fish that need plenty of room to swim around and exercise. If they don't get that, their growth will be stunted and their life expectancy will be drastically shortened. Please. I beg you, don't comment. I've had a goldfish in a one gallon bowl for three years on my desk and he's perfectly happy because just being alive doesn't mean he's happy. Furloughs Aquatics says, I know you've mentioned it before, but any kind of feeder fish and the conditions they're kept in. And then John Williams follows that up by saying feeder fish poor nutrition, and possible infection. Plus, it's just disgusting. Yeah, it's true. These fish are disgusting. Feeder fish aren't raised to be pristine and fat and happy like cattle, pigs, and chickens are. They're raised strictly to produce the biggest numbers possible, meaning they're raised in ponds with thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of other fish competing for food. It's not like these ponds are kept super clean, either. What do you think happens if one of these feeders gets a disease and dies? Well, that fish just died in a pond full of thousands of little starving cannibals that are gonna devour that dead fish in seconds. Now, all of those fish have whatever disease killed the first one. Then they're bagged up hundreds to a bag and sent to your local pet store who then bags them up again and sells them to you to feed to your precious Oscar or catfish. It's kind of scary when you think about it. 
Look, don't come at me with this nonsense. I like to give feeder fish to my fish as a treat so they can fulfill their natural instinct to want to hunt prey. Please, if allowing them to fulfill their instinct was so important to you, why would you be keeping these fish in a glass box? They're full of protein and perfectly healthy for your fish. You're a perfect example of why parents should go back to spanking their kids. Oh boy. Wow. I can't wait to see the comments on that one. Stephen LeBlanc says, Bala sharks or goldfish is my pick. I live in Canada and the recommended tank size for bala sharks and Oscars is 40 gallons. The poor bala sharks that spend their entire cut short lives in a 40 gallon. Yeah, I totally agree with Steven's comment. Bala sharks are one of those fish that people think are just gonna stay small. It makes sense because you always see them at the pet store and they're only like two to three inches, but they get well over a foot long, duh. The other thing is having the word shark in the name makes them stand out even more because people are like, oh, wow, I can have a shark. Bottom line, bala sharks are awesome. They move really fast, they're all over the place, and they'll be a great addition to any aquarium. Just do right by them and put them in the biggest tank you possibly can, and they'll live a long, healthy life. Eben Rifkin says, hybrids. Hobbyists crossbreed species, sell them around, sometimes the fish end up not labeled as hybrids, etc. I think it's the most controversial since both sides have a large supporter base and fair points. It gets very nuanced in the for slash against discussions. For example, it's okay if you do it this way, but not that, or that way, but not this. Thanks for reading. That was very hard to read. And then Lefty 3213A, or Lefty Lots of Numbers, like I like to call him, says, any hybrid. Okay, Evan and Lefty are both my guys, so I'm not trying to start a fight here, but these are both comments that I agree with and disagree with. Here's the thing, I don't disagree with their premise that if you are gonna breed hybrid fish, just make sure that you're presenting them to the fish stores or to the people that are gonna potentially buy them as hybrids. I get that and I don't disagree at all. But if you look around online, you're gonna see this same argument over and over. Hybrids are ruining the hobby. We've gotta stop these renegade breeders that are ruining everything with their crossbred fish. Before you know it, you're not gonna be able to find any purebred fish anymore. Come on, <laughs> that's being a little over dramatic, don't you think? Let's face it, some of the most popular fish in the hobby are hybrid fish, and there's nothing you or I can do about it. Again, I'm not trying to start a fight with anyone. I have the utmost respect for people with differing opinions. I'm just saying there's better things that we could be spending our time on than arguing online about the purity of strains. Catwoman VA says, I think most people see mollies as just starter test fish and don't appreciate their true beauty. They're so beautiful with their different colors, their stripes, their spots. And then there's the Dalmatians. I have a female silvery white balloon molly who has rows of silvery gray spots that look like pearl beading. And the dorsal fin on one of the males, who is orange and white striped, has these white and black spots on his gray fin that looks like some fancy melted glass artwork. They are a truly beautiful fish. This was one that kind of opened up my eyes a little bit because I had never thought of mollies as a throwaway fish, but Catwoman VA is right. There are a lot of people out there that do. You're starting up a new tank and you just throw some mollies in there. They're tough and they can survive the cycle, so Eh, that's just cruel. Just as she said, mollies are amazing little live bears that are available in tons of different colors and fin types. Anyone who looks at them as tester fish should be stuck in a sealed off room that's slowly filling up with smoke. Let's see how tough they are. I guess I'm not the only one pushing buttons today. <laughs> uh, let's just make everyone mad today. Uh... 
Marina McKinley says tangs, especially blue tangs, mostly because tangs swim around a lot and need a lot of room. And people putting them in anything less than 180 gallons is bound to cause a social media hate storm. Honestly, both sides of the debate are very defensive and we even have a name for the staunchest of Tang scrutinizers, the Tang police. Yeah, there's a lot of police in the aquatic community. You've got your betta police, your goldfish police, your hybrid police, there, uh, there's police everywhere. You gotta admire their dedication. Let's face it, we all know why Tangs shot up in popularity a few years ago. We can throw clownfish in that same category. The most tragic thing with tanks, and clowns for that matter, is people have been misled into believing that these fish will be perfectly fine in a small desktop tank. This couldn't be further from the truth, especially with tanks. People want to have that Nemo and Dory combo, and in all honesty, I get it, because they're both amazing fish, but let's do the right thing. If you don't have a huge tank, don't even consider a tang, and also don't put clownfish in a little three gallon tank on your desk. I know people personally that have had a clownfish survive for 30 years. Can you even imagine 30 years in a tiny little cube like that? It's just terrifying. No one said anything about flower horns. When John and I were going through the comments, there was a fish that was not mentioned and it surprised me. And that was flower horns. If you're not familiar with the world of flower horns, these are fish that are specifically bred to accentuate the huge nuchal hump on their head. This is the big balloon looking thing on their head. And in the flower horn world, the bigger the big old hump is, the more pronounced it is, the better it is. But to be honest, I kind of think it's a little weird. I mean, I love fish, but that big bubble thing on his head, it really doesn't make sense to me. And I would be kind of worried it would pop. Ugh. I'm really sorry, flower horn people. I just don't get it. JDR Aquatics says, my controversial aquarium fish is the Pleco. I love them. It's like a predator in my tanks. And then he said a bunch of other stuff too, but we're just gonna focus today on the Plecos because this absolutely had to be on the list. I don't even know how many videos I've done about Plecos. Here's the thing, folks. If you're someone that wants a fish that can help you keep the tank clean and you have a smaller tank, don't buy a common Plecostomus. There are tons of plecos out there that work great in smaller tanks, like Ancestris. These are great for smaller tanks, but the common pleco can get up to 24 inches, and they're sold every day to people with 10 to 20 gallon tanks. Just don't do it. Common plecostomus are controversial for two main reasons. The first is they get huge and they're sold to people that have way too small a tanks. And the other is the situation that's going on down in Florida where people are releasing these fish into rivers because they got too big for their tank. I'll put a link in the description to a video my friend Steve Poland did about this. Take a look at it. It'll absolutely blow your mind. This is another one that wasn't mentioned by our channel members, but we felt like it absolutely had to be on the list, and that's bettas. I'm getting ready to make a whole bunch of friends and also some enemies because internet. Bettas are fish that Lisa and I have dedicated our careers to, so understand that we are a little bit biased here, but if you're someone that enjoys watching bettas fight to the death, you need to get yourself some help because you have some serious issues. Maybe you should consider getting a girlfriend. That might help. Uh, no, it won't help because girls don't like watching Betta's fight. Well, sorry, you're screwed. Listen, I've never seen an underground Betta fighting ring. I don't know anyone that's been to an underground Betta fighting ring, but we all know they're out there. A bunch of hairy, stinky, lonely men ascend from their mom's basement and go to place bets on watching two tiny fish fight each other to the death. 
I realize this is something that's mainly done overseas, but I just have to say it's disgusting. And if it's something that you're into, you really got to get things figured out in your life. I mean, your mom wants her sewing room back in the basement, but your peanut butter pterodactyl sculptures are all in the way. Bonus points to anyone that puts the movie I just referenced in the comment section below. But for all of you who appreciate how amazing bettas are and you want to go somewhere and see an incredible selection of live bettas for sale, you're going to want to head over to keepfishkeeping.com. We have well over 150 bettas for sale as well as all the food and accessories you'll need to take care of them. You better get over there quick because they're not going to last long. Thank you so much for watching. And again, if you want to participate in this series, click that join button down below, become a member of the team. Then you can respond whenever I put one of these posts out each week asking you about a topic that we're going to be discussing in a future video. It's a lot of fun. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you again next week. Thank you.